I am unashamed. What about you? So I guess one of the things you kind of lose track of with so much going on in the uh, in the world with the or in our world with the coronavirus and protests and riots and everything going on is that we're also in a presidential election, which is always a big deal, you know. And I don't know; it seems to be now more in my lifetime where it's it feels like every election is like there's so much riding. You know, on, on there's a happened. whole lot riding there's on this. There's a lot one. riding on it. And so, uh, but one thing I was going to mention uh, to our audience is uh, we time when Dad did his new book, Jesus Politics. We knew it was going to be released in this season. You know, of, of politics is one of the reasons why we wanted to get it in there because it's a it's a view of kingdom mindset, which is what we have to get back to, you know, because we now we have so many people that don't even understand that, don't know anything about Jesus, don't know anything about the Bible. And so that's the idea is, is to infuse that. So I want to encourage you guys to pick it up. And a lot of you have, I don't know if you knew this, Dad, uh, this week you're number one for in the religious book section, you know, and of course the book's been out now over a month, which is pretty amazing. So it's still number is one. It's so number one? It's number one. Huh. So one of the things I want to encourage you, everybody that's gotten it and read it, because I know a lot of you have because you've emailed me. One of the things you could do to help us out is go to Amazon uh, and review the book. You know, do the review because that drives up people searching for it. You know, the more people review it, you know, the the better it helps us. So if you haven't done that, do that. Also, if you haven't picked up the book, Amazon.com is a good place to pick that up and uh, and also review it. So, but that was the reason why we did it. You know, the way we did it, and I thought the book turned out really, really well. It's kind of like that next step after theft. You, know? you look at it, common sense. Live godly, and vote godly. Right. I mean, if people kill their own offspring, I'm never voting for that ever. That's right. You know, practice yeah. perversion. I'm never voting for you right. ever. Right. This is exactly right. Not, not right. Well, unless you get prioritized, what's most You know, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Helmet of salvation, sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It's alive. It's active. Sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. If you're taking notes, 2 Corinthians 10, 4, Ephesians 6, 17, Hebrews 4, 12. Um, in the book of Revelation, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of that testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. That, Romans 13, 2 Corinthians 6, 7, weapons of righteousness in the right hand and the left. Put on the full armor of God, Ephesians 6. You know, and he talks about, you know, so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. So as the kingdom of God, the king being Jesus, he is overseeing all of us. He's the head, high priest, We're operating under him. I know it sounds strange, but I'm a priest in the kingdom of God. (laughs) And I know what some of you are thinking. As he's stroking his beard. Where's your where's your tall hat and your bucket of smoke? I said, No smoke, no hat needed. I'm just saying. But you know, I I think you bring up a good point. It's like we don't in and of ourselves, if you look at us, I mean Al's probably more intelligent, but you know, then both me. you we, guys we are smarter than well, I am. I guess you got it from your mama. Well, Phil, you got a master's degree. <laughs> I mean, I, well, I'm not just a complete idiot, <laughs> but I, but but I'm I'm still solidly C plus in my mind. I'm but C+. Phil, I will say this: you've been in Jesus, you know, longer than us, and you, to your credit, have stuck with that simple message. You know, Al and I got into when you do public speaking and especially Al and church work, I mean, you get into the, the theology, which is, you know, to your point is not mentioned in the Bible, but you <laughs> That's get in. That's why I don't get theological because you say, 
is any of this theology, theological, yeah. theologian, is that even in the Bible? Uh, that'd be no. no. Well, and somebody who, I don't even know if he was a believer, you know, did an analysis of the Bible and came to the conclusion that it was written on a fifth grade level. Right. Well, somebody well, come it, along and said, well, Phil, don't you, don't you feel like uh, uh, you're kind of out of touch with reality and don't you want to know the deeper truths of the Bible? Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. like, let's see. All of my sins removed by the blood of Jesus. I'm guaranteed to be raised from the dead. I have constant mediating work keeping me cleansed. I have the promise and guarantee because of the Spirit of God that I was given when I was born again. Uh, I have life and immortality. Al, that's as deep as I'm digging. Well, look, every, <laughs> every argument I've ever had where somebody said or they established a group, and I'm sticking to the simplicity of Jesus and surrendering to him. And when they've asked that question, I've always read 1 Corinthians 1, 26. He says, brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not C very plus. intelligent. C not plus. very intelligent. <laughs> not many of you were influential. You know, there's a personalities. Okay. Yeah. Not many of you were of noble birth, Man, but God what? chose the foolish <laughs> things of the world. So I'm like, if your doctrine and your theology and your denomination is based on us having to have some kind of intellect to where we can only understand certain things according to your criteria, which <laughs> be, would be way above Jesus, because <laughs> that's pretty simple. Here he is. is. What do you think about him? That's right. You got red letters you can read, and then, and what I was going to say is, I you got to have a I, firm grip on that, and you are wise for doing so. I got a text uh, yesterday from my good friend Todd Lawler, who he wrote a book, and he asked me to write the forward, and I'm always a little weird about doing that, and I'm like, you know, I met this guy. For you that don't know, he's confined to a wheelchair. He can't speak where you can understand him very well but he tries i mean he he's he he has i forgot the exact diagnosis of his condition yeah, I met dad and i met him uh, at, at gateway yeah that's where i met him yeah. and uh, i you know one he's of, a tremendous one of the, guy one of the brothers here told me he was he shared he told me he said he shares jesus as much as your dad and i thought well that's somebody i want to meet so i was doing an event there and i think i shared the story on the earlier podcast but anyway he asked me to write the forward to his book but i just thought you know what i'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, Todd, because it's better to text him because if you have a conversation, it, it's going to take a while. I said, send me the book because he had the book written. I was like, if I don't like it, I'm just telling you right now, I'm not writing that forward. <laughs> he was like, fine with me, brother. And so uh, he's like, pray about it, whatever. Well, he sent me the book. I could not stop reading it. When I started reading it, I read the whole thing in one sitting. And so and you're not a big book uh, guy. No, I'm not. <laughs> the name of it's weak is the new strong. But anyway, he sent me a, a picture yesterday that it was it had reached a, the Amazon bestseller. Oh, awesome! And uh, I was like, awesome. But and then I told him, I said, I'm not surprised. And I put on there, stay humble, because he was like showing me all these stats, you know, <laughs> which kind of convicted him. He was like, oh, brother. And he went on this long thing. I was like, look, I'm just saying, this is yeah, God Don't working. make it about the numbers. Yeah. This is God working. This is how what he does. But if you, if I drove any person over there and you had a conversation with this guy, you would never think that, you know, weapons of mass instruction and some kind, you know, <laughs> You would think, are you crazy? But he's real. He loves Jesus. Yep. He's really smart. Loves people. And, God. Uh, it's an does, awesome book if you want to check it out. It's God called. does work in mysterious ways. He does, and through yeah. through people that you wouldn't think. But would you know what, what? convicts What's the title again? Tell the folks. Weak is the new strong, and I I wrote the forward. If you just Google, you know, weak is the new strong, Todd Lawler, or even me, right? Because I wrote since I wrote the forward. What's weird is you know how when these uh, editors get involved, we've all written the books, oh, yeah. and I, I told him I was like, "Now we've crossed one one." I said, "I love the book, and I'll write the forward." I said, "But I'll tell you this: you're going to send what I write 
back, because I don't know what I'm going to write, back to your editors, they're probably not going to like what I write <laughs> because I'm just going to go from the heart. So if you're willing to do that, he, I said, then I'll do it. He said, go for it, brother. <laughs> so I basically just wrote how we met. But what was appealing to the book about me was it, it, I looked at my own life and I realized what is my greatest weakness, my greatest fear? And a lot of people don't know this about me. I think maybe I've shared it before. But when I was a kid, I was real shy. I mean, like, disturbingly so. And I don't know if it was because your lifestyle and what all happened. But for whatever reason, I just, when I got around people, I didn't say a word. I mean, I went a whole year, you know, but seventh, eighth grade, I never said a word to anybody. <laughs> Nothing. Well, I just nod. <laughs> I you tell know, you what, and, things have changed now, have they? Done? Well, I was fixed. <laughs> Can't to, shut him up. No. <laughs> I, I was fixed to tell you. So people find that weird because I think God, in the, and that's what His book is about. He, you know, we it's it's really uncomfortable reading the book because He's thankful for His condition because He said that's the canvas that God made me strong. In, in him, and I mean, I'm gonna tell you, it tu great, it great tugs point. on your heartstring. This guy is going around in a dang wheelchair, and he can't, you know, say a sentence that's understandable. I mean, it, it's and it's painful to watch him even try to talk. And here, God has blessed him. He has a beautiful wife. He has kids. Which I was like, I didn't know you could do that, Todd. He's like, Oh yeah, the Lord is with me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> he had some funny moments, but he he loves the Lord. And I, when I read that book, what what was uh, very appealing to me was in my own life. I thought I saw how God took that weakness in my life and turned it into His strength, it, which at least gave me the confidence to get up. And even though I'm a mess when I speak in front of people in my mind. I've learned that it doesn't come across that way. And right. I give credit to God about that. And in his life, it's the same thing. Here's a guy being thankful for what others would think was some kind of curse put yeah. on him, and, and God blessed him. So I just wanted to say in that vein, you wouldn't think here he has the armor of God, because I know we were going to take a viewer question about that armor of God. Right. I thought this guy is one of the most powerful people that you'll run across. But you would never think that based on outward appearance and the way he is physically. And so uh, it's, it's really exciting. It's funny, Jace, because you wrote a forward for that book. I wrote a forward for a book that was the hardest book I've ever had read. I mean, the, the hardest book to get through it that I've ever read. I wrote a forward for it. And it was about the abortion doctor, Gosnell. Some friends of mine who are journalists, who are Irish journalists, um, wrote this book about this guy and, and also made a movie about it. Basically, he was just, I mean, he was killing babies, you know, they, they, whatever the Pennsylvania law was, he was killing right up to their birth and then birthing them and killing them, which is how they finally got yeah, it. They're doing it, still doing it. I know, well, now yeah. it's being legalized, which oh, is yeah. incredible. So anyway, it was it was such a hard read because it was just yeah. awful. It was terrible. It was just, And this guy was awful and the women died there. It was just a terrible, terrible thing. But I was so convicted by it that you know when they asked me to do the thing, I was like, "I'll do it." But then when I then I had like you, I had to sit down and think, "Okay, what am I going to say about this?" Because yeah. it was so awful. But I managed to do it, and it was good to be supportive of it because you got to get the story out. The media wouldn't touch it, of course, uh, except for you know Fox and a couple of those other ones to even yeah. tell the story. You know, but it was well. It, even even uh, Todd had to break through a lot of walls because you know here he comes rolling in, literally, yeah, and saying I got an idea, you know, about a book, and and he since he can't talk real well, they're they're just not thinking that it. No. but but he found his way yep. to share Jesus because he's a brilliant guy. Oh yeah, and he can write. Yep. And so you and would never know when you read the book that this is, I mean, of course, you figure it out pretty quick because he he's, makes fun of himself. Yep. And ha, and people are... Plus he's so, brilliant so, with social media because I follow him. Oh, yeah. And I mean, he has some well, of the best does, He doesn't have a lot else to do. Yeah. <laughs> but I've told him that, you know, because a few times he would send me a text because I gave him a number and he's like, are, you know, are you upset? You're not responding. I'm like, 
Okay, let me explain something to you. I'm, I'll get back. I gave you my number, but I'm not going to be sitting there on my phone and responding immediately. It may be days. I may be in the woods. I may not have a cell phone. But You're once we got that lined out, it's been awesome. You're as bad as Tebow. Let's, uh, let's take a break. So this is kind of the new normal uh, this summer. It's been crazy. It's just, you know, nothing's been like it normally is in our culture. Uh, and so one of our uh, one of our sponsors is called, their, their name is Bespoke Post, which I, I found was really interesting. And their website is boxofawesome.com. And uh, <laughs> I, found, I found these guys fascinating. Basically, they've come up with a box of gifts for men. Th- things that men like. Uh, and we're talking anything from stuff to groom yourself, which probably wouldn't appeal to y'all. Uh, cooking, t- <laughs> thank you. <yeah. laughs> cooking tools, outdoor gear, you know, a lot of different stuff like that. And so it's kind of like a when it comes, and it's the same when I get one for us to talk about, it's like you can't wait to get in and to find it. It's kind of high end, really good stuff. So it's like treasure hunting. For, it is, for, it, but it the treasures come to you. It comes to you. It comes to you to your mailbox. Modern to your front day door. treasures. Phil. I like it. So here's how you do. You, you, to get started, you go to boxofawesome.com and you take a quiz. So they kind of know this kind of stuff you like, obviously. And then you sign up. Uh, you cancel any time, and basically they're going to start sending you a box that's going to come. It's seventy dollars at least worth of gear, but it's only forty five bucks. So you're going to get a good value out of it as well. So. Uh, if you want to go check them out, it's boxofawesome.com. You get 20% off your first monthly box because you heard about it here. Enter the code FIL when you check out boxofawesome.com, code FIL, 20% off, and start treasure hunting. Yeah, I'm going to give my boys this as a present. Perfect. Well, T- the, how, the difference how- in me and Tebow <laughs> is I don't, after a week, act like you just sent it. <laughs> He's like, respond. I'm like, Tim Tebow sent me a weird text. And I'm, what does it mean? I'll, oh, I scroll back. Oh, he's respond. I sent him a text two weeks ago. It's like, no, the, the dates I was asking about, that came and went. So this would have been good information two weeks ago. Have your guy give you your phone and let you check it more often. Right. And as a reminder, I've done this on a couple of podcasts because I'm still working – on returning emails, I told somebody, you told Zach, I think, I started, because it was a couple of weeks I was away because of corona and all that, and so I started out with 750 emails from unashamed listeners, because I gave my email out a while back, and I got it down, I'm under 300 now, so I'm getting there, some of you are like, is he ever going to respond? I will, but it's just going to take but me a while. isn't it piling on? Isn't that something that can't, don't you add to it? What do you mean? Well, if you answered 450 in the time. Well, sometimes you do, correct, because somebody was sending a reply. But I think you've gotten into something that may be unwinnable. <laughs> it may be, but more, what, more undoable. Yeah, it's just one mm-hmm. person. So I'm just saying it's be patient. doable. But, you know, the, they're so amazing, and I, and I love them because the stories are incredible. It's, it's, I just can't walk well, away from it. Well, every once in a while, you'll, you'll send me one. So I, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, Al at restorationproductions.net is my new email for you because I got some help, you know, p- people sorting and sending stuff to me and helping me because a lot of stuff is like unanswerable. But I haven't said that. that. Every, every once in a while, when someone like completely disagrees with me and, you know, Al send those to me, which I find humorous. <laughs> But this one, like this cinema. one the other day just got my blood boiling. <laughs> oh boy! And uh, I, I feel like I need to bring it up. I just feel the Lord is is telling me one of the basic blood boiling. Look, one of my passages that I read more than anything or quote, which now let me say this quote, just because I didn't go there and say here is the book chapter and verse, didn't mean that it wasn't a quote from the Bible. So. A preacher sent me this really nice letter about the title of it. It was kind of done in a. You'll appreciate this as a for you know as a. Mm -hmm. Well, are you do you are you ever a former preacher? Because now you you just preach the mafia. You never. Al preaches now for free. So welcome to the club. Yep. And I like it better. I quoted. Evidently, we got lost in translation. 
because this is a quote. This is Acts 17, and I'm going to quote this. This will only take a minute. <laughs> but y- y'all use this just like I do. I like it because he addresses the basic three questions of humanity, which I've said many times. How did you get on the earth? What are you doing here? And how are you leaving? If you want a, a good sermon, or you know, if you're talking to a person who, who doesn't know Jesus, those are three very good questions. It makes everyone think whether they're a believer or not. We'll say that again because a lot of people send us emails saying, how do I get a conversation going? So this is it, how I start. Say it one more time. Now, we did, a, we did a former show. podcast. You can start with a meal. That's always a good start. Yep. And then you just let it go from there. Or, but if you just meet someone, you start with those three questions, especially if somebody is is showing some, uh, you know, emotion or they don't, they've had a bad religious experience. It's like when you bring up Christianity or Jesus and they're, oh, well, I ask those three questions right then. It's like, well, how did you get here? And they're like, where? On the earth. You've got to process your, in your mind You've got to make a decision about that. That one of humans, humanity's decision-making process is ascertain how you got here, and so how you live will be dependent on that. If right. you believe you came from an explosion, and you are one cell that come out of a mud puddle, well, no wonder you don't view life. You know, you talked about earlier about where's the sanctity of life. Well, if we just all came from some kind of gaseous mist and nothing, that's why they don't view life as sacred. Oh, we're just nothing. Came from nothing, and we're nothing. And I guarantee you, you're probably bitter and depressed. Yep. We believe you're made in the image of God. Number two, what are you doing here? Which is a great question. What are you doing here? What are we supposed to do here? Do we Now, the world will say, well, you get a job, find your career, make some money, and retire. That's what you're doing here. I'm going to have to disagree with you on that. I believe that God uses us to make Jesus known. That's why we're here. That's why he hasn't come back yet. That's the process that he chose. Mm-hmm. So, and the third is how are we leaving, which is a kind of funny, but <laughs> so you're either leaving in a box and it's over, or you believe that your spirit will go and become energy and unite with the gaseous mist that formed you, <laughs> and you'll be part. This people believe this stuff. Some people <laughs> freeze their bodies. Cut off Hoping their heads. We'll find their a cure. And some Thaw people, me out, jump start me, let yeah, me go again. Right. Star Trek, eventually the Borg will visit us, <laughs> assimilate my body. <laughs> some people just believe nothing. Yeah. And so I believe Jesus is coming back, raise my dead body because I have his spirit. It's impossible for me to die. My body will be changed not exchanged, Mm -hmm. and we will be with the Lord forever. We're going to live forever with a body looking around, eating fish because we want to. So in that sermon in Acts 17, because it all came from you worship as something unknown, because they had an altar said to an unknown God. He said, I'm going to explain that to you. One of the lines in there was this. The God who made the world and everything in it is Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in buildings, some versions say temples, built by hands. So the letter that you sent from this preacher says, God lives in buildings. And he sent me a whole letter saying, Jace, you're wrong. Now, here's my initial reaction. You're, you sent me a letter and I love you. And at the end, he says, I love you, Jace. So he was, he was, he was nice about it. Right. But his whole argument is based on something that I quoted. Now, how, I mean, let's read that again. God, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in buildings built by hands. And the title of his note to me was, God lives <laughs> In buildings. And the Apostle Paul said he does not. So here was his argument. His argument was, where two or three are gathered together, there I will be also. That was his argument. Now look, here's what's happened there, in my opinion. I'll let y'all join in, see what you think. 
he has a narrative in his mind, and he later on said it makes him uncomfortable if someone wears a hat in the building because this is sacred ground. He went and quoted the part in Exodus about where you're standing is uh, holy ground. Uh, what he should have made, a better argument would have been that Christ is in us, the Holy Spirit. Which is the and, first thing I told you when you t- I, that's I thought yeah, that's what he was saying. But is he where say. we're at. Okay, yeah. So we happen to be in the building. But look, that Holy Spirit was in me before I walked in the building. That is correct. And so what is Paul's point? Because the two or Why three. Why is he saying he doesn't live in buildings? <laughs> what what? He lives in us. Make that point. I'll be like, okay. And while we're in the building, maybe there should be some decency and some order. All right, I would have. Plus, even a better explanation is since he lives in us, we are the building. <laughs> Which is <laughs> what is that? First Corinthians. That was another that's, one that's I thought it, of. That's Ephesians two, Ephesians three. No, I think it's uh, no. First Corinthians three nine Hang says, on. "For Hang you on, are." Before you read that, let's take a break. So, Dad, I think one of the coolest things you and I got to ever do was to go to Normandy and walk on Omaha Beach and go to that cemetery. I mean, it was just, it was such a moving, powerful thing. And it, Dad did a documentary there. and um, But it really kind of brought World War II. I've always been interested in it, but it just kind of made it much more real to me, didn't it, to you? I mean, just the idea the, of being the, there. The men and women who fought in World War II, including my dad and my mother. My mother was a riveter on an airplane, and, and my dad fixed ships while they were there. Right. But for the most part, they were godly people. Exactly. The whole bunch. And, and you know, obviously w- saved the world for us. Yep. Uh, in honor of the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II, Ancestry.com, uh, which a lot of people are familiar with, we are as well, uh, where you can find out, you know, people you're related to. Uh, they've just released uh, something called the U.S. Draft Card Collection from World War II. So it's over 36 million draft cards and so it's a really cool way to be able to find out if you're related to somebody uh, that served in World War II, you know, because of these draft cards and names. So uh, we want to encourage you guys to check these guys out. Uh, a lot of great stories that are there. If you go to Ancestry.com slash Phil, you can start discovering some of those stories today. Ancestry.com slash Phil. 1 Corinthians 3, nine. for you are God's fellow workers... You are God's field, God's building. Uh, Ephesians okay. uh, Ephesians 2, while you're there, we're fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. Thank you. And in him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord, which makes it impossible to get that inside a structure. I got another one. So, every, but I, I got we're another, the structure. Let me read the other one. First Peter 2, 4. As you come to him, the living stone, capital S, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a mm. spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices. That's all you were saying. So all I was saying was, when you have a building and you call it a church, which is wrong, we're the church. Correct? That's right. We're the building. That's right. God decided to let us house him, which is crazy to think about. Don't put rules on like, Oh, I have a hat on in the building. Oh no, I'm fixed to get struck by lightning. Because he he made a point. It bothers him if somebody walks in. So here here comes a guy. He don't know your rules. He has a hat on. I wear a hat in the building. You know why? Because it doubles as a hairnet. <laughs> if, if I don't have this hat right on, I would walk into that wall. I would have a wreck on the way to church and die. Because I have hair that goes everywhere. So, but he doesn't know your rules. He comes in there because he wants to know about Jesus and he wants to go to heaven. And here comes a guy and says, hey, we don't wear, you're showing, you're being disrespectful. This is a house of God. Well, I'm going to come back and say, let that guy come in. Forget your stupid rule. You know, I don't have to say stupid, but it makes me angry. (laughs) 
Because I'm like, you're alienating people because of a rule, because in your theology, you have God tied to this building because you took another passage and said, well, where two or three gathered together, he's there. So now all of a sudden we've got to act differently. And I don't mean act from a spiritual, because he, the, the cases he made, I forgot the other ones, but they were along the lines of not wearing a hat in a building. He's like, it bothers me. Mm. So there you go. That's a little deeper uh, you know, meaning of, of why I said God doesn't live in buildings. Don't come up with frivolous rules at your church building. Don't even call it church. Yeah, I like it how we'll call it a building. It's a structure. Where we meet. Yeah, you think about that. I hate to be morbid and barbaric, but what would you do if your church building burned down in between now and Sunday? What would you do? Well, that's I would the, be that's thrilled. The, that's the end of the building. <laughs> I would be thrilled because it would take the albatross <laughs> off of, from trying to do ministry. You know what people. most people would say? Well, where are we going to go to church? <laughs> I'm sure you'll find some. I mean, it'd be. I hate it because it's a building and it's comfortable and it's nice. Going but, to the church building is never mentioned in the Bible. How about this? The church that met at that building, they're now going to meet somewhere else, and they might just meet right there without the structure right. if yep. it's not raining. That's correct. But <laughs> Jesus is not going to change, your, and how you respond to him is not going to change. The need to fulfill your purpose on earth while you're here to share Jesus, that's not going to change. Loving people is not going to change. It's not going to change. And so that's what's happened to me with North America, the biggest problem with churches is or are the buildings. You are correct. It becomes some kind of weird structure that God has ordained, and we now have to act differently and respond differently, and there's rules, and we don't know all the rules, and guess what? The common man, he's not coming there. There's been a lot, a lot, a lot of money invested in structures that people think that's where God is. In order to find him, you have to go there to get in touch with him, never realizing you're not on a, out under four or five big over up, over cup trees next to yeah. the river, and there's four or five of you, three or four of you gathered. That's the church building right there under the trees. Well, we've proven by this podcast that there's a better way to reach a lot of people with the Bible and with Jesus. You are correct. Then How about just, real life? You know, being in our spot. It, it reminded yeah. me, Jason, your story reminded me of a, a guy, an older guy that uh, is what used to be a member at our church. And he was a preacher too, preached out. And it was a Wednesday night, and I'll never forget it. And I was younger then, but I was still, you know, I was working for the church. And he comes up, there's, I, I just met three young guys, first time they'd ever come. It's a Wednesday night. They're sitting there, three young college age guys. I was so excited they were there. You know, I was fixing to teach, and, you know, this is, I'm excited. So I walked to the back. They all had hats on. I walked to the back. I'm about getting ready to go teach. And this brother comes up to me, tapped me on the shoulder. He said, are you going to deal with those three guys or me? And I was like, well, I just met him. What do you mean deal with them? He said, about getting them hats off in here. And I mean, I, I mean, I can't tell you how angry I got in a yeah. split second. And it was righteous anger. It wasn't just at him. But I, I just looked at him. I had to calm down because you know, I'm physically going to teach. And I was like, you will not say a word to those three guys. They're here for the first time tonight. They're fishing here about Jesus. Do not say anything. I mean, I just bowed up on it. Mm -hmm. And it shocked him, you know, because, yeah. you know, I try to be diplomatic with people and all that. But it made me so angry that these guys are fishing to get an opportunity to hear about Jesus and you're worried about them wearing a hat? Well, and, right. and, and, and we'll just run them off. But Al, you yeah. saying this makes some people uncomfortable. Because they feel like... Now, you have this situation in Corinthians where it says women should pray... You know, a, a man shouldn't pray with his head covered. Yeah. And I had somebody put that well, I got up. an email about that. Why do y'all wear long hair? Same thing. Well, know? right. Now... <laughs> completely different issue <laughs> we'll, is. we'll spend a whole podcast on that yeah but we do if need you to read the book of of first corinthians you will notice pretty quickly they had some problems they <laughs> big, had big time. they had some gender issues which is not 
uncommon to what's going on even in very America. Very much so. You're America. correct. It was very similar. You had women dressing up like men, and you had men dressing up like women. Mm-hmm. And the problem was you you couldn't ascertain who was male and who was female. Well, that's right. right. Uh, Lots of uh, well, you remember first they were doing six. transgender for for transgender right. was known about. That's right. Yep. And so he addresses that, and guess what he did? Which is what God always does. He addressed it in love, and it wasn't like. I mean, to me, that's we get off in our culture of religion yeah. from what this actually said. He addresses that. But then to try to apply that to say, oh, well, you got a hat on. I know, I know this. I'll just say this. Whenever your freedom is infringed on, because I have numerous verses that says Christ set us free. It is for freedom we've been saved. I mean, so whenever you start coming up with laws and rules, especially ones on down the the way is like whether you have a hat on. That's a long way from the heart, <laughs> you know, what you have on your head. Because I know that why don't we focus on all the verses that talks about your heart, which is what you can't see. Let's take a, another break. So, Dad, what do millions of Americans and three former U.S. presidents have in common? No Jesus. <laughs> No. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. That's pretty good. Uh, actually, they all agree that bowl and branch sheets are the softest, most comfortable, pure organic sheets on earth. You were way off. I mean, you wasn't even I was on the globe. The same universe. Yeah. So bowl and branch sheets are amazing. Uh, that's exactly what I'm sleeping on. I haven't tried them yet. I know. I got to get you. I just got a new set. These guys sent me one. Is so it kind of like get crawling back up in your mother's arms? It's I just mean, so cool and comfortable. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I don't. They just feel great. Awesome. That's, that's all I know. I you say. tried them, Jay? Yeah, they're fantastic. Well, Jay has them as well. Give me some of them. All right, I'm gonna give you some to try. So if you go online, they're gonna send directly to you. You don't buy these at the store. You buy these from them, uh, which is really great. Um, you can sleep on them for a month, risk free. You send it back, which you won't, because I don't either. So you go, you get fifty dollars off uh, a set of sheets if you go to Bowl and Branch, B O L L and Branch dot com. Use the promo code Robertson, B O L L and Branch dot com. Promo code Robertson, fifty dollars off best sheets you'll ever pick up. Hmm. And look, this it's not just the, it's not just hats. It's it's. I've been in church work long enough. I can. I've sat in enough meetings. I've heard enough arguments about somebody wearing shorts, or if you go back far enough, women wearing pants. I mean, like all these things that were about meeting in that place together. All those rules. And Dad, you and I've been elders for a long time. People consistently making rules up about that meeting place. It's just. I mean, it, it really, it's its getting away from everything we we're talking it's about. It's a sad it. thing yeah, to it's watch. It's a sad thing to watch. Well, now, we were going to, I guess, I mean, we can introduce the armor of God today. <laughs> yeah, thanks I, a lot, Jason. I, I, we're, I went, we're almost through with the podcast because you took off. I felt like your... time cruising. and he said, you've never seen me upset. <laughs> send, me a, send me a memo that says God is in the building. He's well, for the listeners. in the building. And for I'm the like, listeners, for the listeners. Uh, and we'll get on the arm of God ne- next time. Well, we still got enough time. Well, well, yeah, 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 well, get to just remember these verses. Psalms 34, 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. Now, that's and, a good verse. Right and, he delivers, that and he delivers them. That's Psalms 34, 7. You're like, the angel of the Lord encamps around us, and he delivers them. Well, on the, in the grand scheme of spiritual armor, just remember, you're surrounded by powerful angelic beings who are looking after you. Remember the story in oh. se- Remember the story in Second Kings six. When oh, I love yeah. that. Story. Elisha was. You no, know, he said, "Open his eyes." Oh, so I don't he, know. There's a lot of them. I don't know whether they're, they're we're we're surrounded. This is going to be bad. And he was like, "Lord, open his eyes so he can see what I'm seeing." And it was just. Thousands of angels. There you go. You know. uh, <laughs> then gives, you got I, Psalms. It gives me chills every time. You got Psalms ninety-one four. Listen, He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. Pandemic or no pandemic, 
His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. He's not going to desert you. He's looking after you. Just uh, just calm down. That's a duck passage because that's what ducks yeah. do. They put the and then finally, the Psalms 125, 2, As the mountain surrounds Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. So I read those texts and I said, spiritual armor, you know, and the sword of the spirit, you know, and the, the belt of truth buckle around your waist, your breastplate of righteousness, like Ephesians 6. I'm all in. But just remember, you say all those things are metaphors. You say, where's the real protection? I mean, the breastplate of righteousness. Mm-hmm. How could that be? Uh, 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 well, uh, it's, it's God looking after you. Right. Oh, yeah. Look, it, the book of Ephesians, I mean, I think the the scholars and what what they taught you in seminary, you know, the first three chapters are really telling you your position and Correct. how great God is, which which is always the way following Jesus is. He's not looking, you know, like when you're a parent, you go through this stage where all you want is compliance. I mean, that's why you say things like. Well, how come I have to do it? And you're like, because I said so. I don't care how you feel about it. This is what you're going to do. Now, when they get to be 14 and 15 and you start saying that, there's problems. Because yep. they, because now... Because now they're learning on their own. They need to be you, You've taught. got, I mean, this is a little parenting 101, is that they've got to want to do it. So just making them comply. So he spends three three chapters, and if I just briefly touched on... The, and I want to make a point that goes back to this part about God's in the building. He lives in the building. You know, he says in chapter one, God in love predestined us to be adopted as sons through Jesus Christ before the beginning of time. I mean, this was his plan for us to experience with him. He uh, he talked about us being having the promised Holy Spirit in 13 and 14, a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance, everything God has, we get. He then talks about uh, why Jesus has authority. He's above all rule, authority at the end of chapter 1. Power and dominion, God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is us, the people, not the building, then in Act, uh, Ephesians 2, the, one of the most famous chapters in the entire Bible. You were objects of wrath. You were dead. You were under the control of the evil one. But guess what? Because of his grace, it's 100% him. None of you. He seated with you. He seated you with him in the heavenly realms. It's all this good stuff. Then he brings everybody, all races, Jew or Gentile, under one complete place of unity in jesus i mean what an awesome thought so you get to chapter three and he makes this statement which is going to be my point in verse 12 it says in him in christ and through faith in him we may approach god with freedom and confidence you just think about that statement you have, he's given you through his spirit the beginning of time he wants you to be a ch- child forever he rescued you from the dominion of the darkness. He destroyed racism. All of the, the things that we're after in the world. He's given you freedom and confidence so that you may approach God with freedom and confidence. And then somebody raises his hand and says, unless you have a hat on. <laughs> unless you're in that building. Well, all of a sudden that seems stupid. Which is why I, is I, I get so emotional <laughs> about it. Because I'm like, you're reading all this. And then all of a sudden, you're interjecting something that doesn't make any sense. Whether you have a hat on or not? You, you've missed it. You, you have missed it, which is why he said God doesn't live in buildings. It's about what's going on in your heart. You understand Jesus. This is the plan of God. We happen to meet. That's why when the coronavirus hit and they said, well, the church buildings, or they didn't say church building, they said churches can't meet. Yep. Well, that's impossible. <laughs> Oh, we're going to meet, buddy. <laughs> the, the, oh, oh, so I, you know, so Missy the other day, she went, when we were in South Texas, she went, but she had to have a mask on. They had so many rules. And she's like, you know what? I can't talk to anybody. We're, we're kind of missing 
we need to just break down into little. They asked me, change. "What are you going to do since they've shut yeah. down all the church? You can't make go to church anymore." I said, "Yeah, you can." They're like, "What are you talking about?" I said, "We're two or three are gathered together." Which is the point of in Jesus' name, Amen. He'll be there. You don't need uh, structures. It's sitting on a side of a creek bank, sitting on the side of the river bank, walking down the road, wherever you are. So uh, make a difference. Let's take our last break. One of the things I was going to say, Jazz, there was a, a church, a local church here, pretty small. And so I heard about this because we hadn't started meeting again at our spot, which we do now, because, um, you know, you got all these rules in place. And so so the people would come, and there would be a escort there. You had your mask on. They had their mask. You were walked to a certain place. You have to sit here. So you were set down, <laughs> and you sit here. There was no singing talking to anybody else and then the preacher mm-hmm. came out and preached and then somebody escorted you out and they were describing this situation and, and me as even as a as a speaker I was just thinking you know that I don't want to do that that doesn't sound no. very exciting no. it doesn't it yeah. doesn't sound like anything I mean so basically it was just kind of we want you to come I guess punch that, in out but, the whole thing the force behind that all of these social distancing and fear. Yeah. But They're look, scared to death. Now, Phil, think about and this. And we should be fearless. Of, huh. of, of, but of, but of. if you asked anybody, you said, who does the work for the church? What would you say? What's your first reaction? What would people say? Not what you would say. What would most people say? They would, would you, say the preacher, whatever he... The preacher. Yeah. Whatever he... So after this whole thing I went through, and, and where does, where's his central location? At the church. Yep. Which is not. It's a building because we're the church. So but he, he has get, an office there. He of has course. an office. This is headquarters. <laughs> and guess what? He's the head. <laughs> now you read this and it's like headquarters is in heaven yep. and the head is Jesus and we're the body. That is the church. So he gets to Ephesians 4 and he's like, he, he makes it very clear. There's one spirit. There's one body. There's one Lord one faith, one baptism, one God. And he talks about each one has been given grace. And then he talks about these people. He says, it was he who gave some to be apostles. Now, they're not. that was an eyewitness to the resurrection. Yeah. So they came and went. And some to be, but they're not going far, you know. Some to be prophets, some to be, uh-oh, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Now, here's the interesting next phrase. To prepare God's people for work, <laughs> works of service. Well, according to this, they're supposed to prepare the people to work, which, and the reason I'm bringing this up is that's why when you get to the end, it's like, well, what do I need armor for? Because we do the work. <laughs> Out, out here in the world, it's, not a, it's not, dangerous work. Yeah, <laughs> the building that there's no battle going on there, other than somebody getting mad about somebody got a hat on, or you know he ate a Rice Krispie treat in the sanctuary. <laughs> Let's have a meeting right now because God is fixed to burn the building because we had a visitor. First of all, sat in Sister Clothes' seat and then sat there and ate a Rice Krispie treat. <laughs> So we stop everything. He probably had a cup of coffee, too, which is also yeah. anathema. No eating I, in the church, I've had it. people say, oh, you can't eat in there. And they, I don't even know where they get that. But evidently it's in there because I've seen those meetings erupt because they're like, there was a guy that walked in the sanctuary and actually drank a cup of coffee while the Woo! preacher was talking. So somewhere they found a rule where that's at. I think it's the, one, the one where it says the Lord's Supper. First Corinthians. Where they said, don't you have homes? First Corinthians 11, yeah. There was a, it, Jace, it, look, you there wonder was, why <laughs> so many in our country have fallen under the control of Satan. It's what you're discussing. That's why yeah. they, they, they say, you know what? Get me, get me out of here. So we got whole metropolitan yeah. areas of people that don't even know anything about who God is, Jesus Christ, none of that stuff. And yet you got buildings spread out across the country and in some of these places. And, and Jesus had been talked about. They'll get their creed, and this is their creed. You say, uh-oh, here's the rules. Here are the rules. Here are the rules. Here are the rules. 
rule after rule after rule mm. after rule. Well, I it's think it comes from a sense. I think most people, I'm going to say this, most, that's my opinion, are sincerely mistaken. They've yeah. just met at a building so long. It's how they were taught. It makes them comfortable. So when anything different happens, which is why they're not bringing people to and Jesus. And by the way, look, that's everybody sits in the same, same spot as they did the last time they were there. Yeah. They sit in the same spot. And yeah, I tell the story about the, the little old lady <laughs> and, just, and ran people out of her seat. You know, it's like, I don't care if you're visiting there. That's you my, remember even at our church, they said, seat. you know, we got people, they, they were saying something about they were, it was so scattered. I forgot what the reasons were. And uh, somebody asked me about it. I said, well, rip them pews out of there. <laughs> they're not going to sit in them if they're not yeah, in there. We don't have pews but, where we are. No yeah, pews. I know. But they were like, well, no, let's don't go crazy. <laughs> I was like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> Which I, is going to lead to just. I've spoken at a bunch of little country churches, and I always chuckle because I'll see people come in, older folks. And again, sincere people. They love God. But. And they've left their Bible there, you know, their shawl. Their, uh, it's like their little spots and all these pews. And mm-hmm. I just thought, because, you know, it's like when we are come back here for our little God God moment, but you, you, I was thinking none of them even took their Bibles with us. It's like, yeah. you know, while we're here, this was the thing. And look, I've, yep. spent, well, I've, I've spent most of my life teaching and preaching and certainly being centered around our church building or our building. But at the same time, I realized that's, Jesus is in us. And so whether we had it, in fact, I thought the pandemic but was I, probably going to be an eye-opener when, when all of a sudden people weren't meeting in their structures about what what happens when... I viewed it as a good thing. I did too. And I, I think it showed us that when we come under persecution, which is coming if this other side wins the majority in, in our culture. Yeah. And, and what's going to happen is we're going to be like China. Then you're underground. You are correct. And so we're, we're going to be secretly getting By the way, Al, it the seems time. the kingdom seems to function very well under strict totalitarian regimes. It 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 always has. Th- there are millions of and the you know sons why? and daughters of God in China. people are going to well, be looking of, for freedom. Well, a lot of churches are trying the same thing. Because, well, exactly I mean, right. it's the same concept. Like a pew, I mean, it's one of the most uncomfortable things things you can sit in. Yeah. You know? I'm oh, it's like, awful. People, you know, they charge $100, basically, to go to a movie and get popcorn and, and, and a drink. But, you know, now some of these movie theaters, but I don't know what they'll do post-coronavirus. I mean, I went and saw one with my son, and they ba- the seat... I was like, like had a little cup of look, and it would lay down. Yeah, I got pews <laughs> are the are the is dampen more yeah. uh, interaction than any way you could sit. That's true. Put rows of pews. Well, you, the people you're looking at in front of everything's you, looking front. Where you're they're... looking at the back of their head. Well, they said you have to they... break your neck to look around behind you. <laughs> look, so they... you can look at the one right here beside you and this one, but that's about as far as you can go. It, it's just not good but for what interaction. I said is they said that revitalized the movie theater experience because you got to go. Who wants to go sit for two hours and be uncomfortable right. and sit in a nasty chair? And so they did it. So yeah. I'm like, why don't we do that at the church bell? I mean, make the thing. Give us some stadium seating. Let me. <laughs> Relax here. At least I can listen to this old boy. And have a place where I can put my Bible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Have somebody come up, you know, volunteers and say, you know, how are you? Yeah. Need anything? No. When Great. I go to a church yeah. building, I'm walking in. Of course, they usually have a weapon on, and but then I got my <laughs> coffee bottle. I got my coffee bottle, set it up there. I'm like, okay, boys. Let's just, yeah. well, we it fixed, comes, the, it we fixed com- the worship to Almighty it here. It comes from the same thing. If we're going to go to heaven... We got to pay the price. They don't focus on Jesus paying the price, and we're gonna have to be as miserable as possible because there's no way we can be comfortable here and this be a good thing. I'm telling you, I've been to places where I thought it's like if we had a blueprint on how we can make this as miserable as possible, and then they're like, "We just don't know why people won't show up and go to heaven." Well, I'm like, "Cause they're a, like, they can't a, be going to heaven. You can they're make too it, depressed. You can make it worse. You can put a mask on, tell them they can't sing, and they just have to sit down and shut up. I guess that makes it worse." Well, we didn't get to Ephesians 6, but we will next we time. We kind of did. We introduced We it. introduced Actually, Jace gave a little exposition, which I got a couple more thoughts you brought out when we get back to Ephesians. Ephesians so. is one book that you got to be careful about going in there and making a point on two verses. That's right. 
It, it's a totalitary letter, in my opinion. It is, and and I've got a couple more thoughts about that. I made some notes, so we'll talk about that next time on Unashamed. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube, and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.